In buren kan Todd nog altijd niet geloven dat Jim en Dorothy nu samen zijn. Hij ziet de toekomst erg zwart in wanneer hij alle nadelen van hun relatie op een rijtje zet. Ook Lucy vindt het maar niks, maar zij heeft ook nog andere problemen. Er is iets dat je kunt me vertellen. Hoe hoorde je over de koffieshop? Ik bedoel, Queensland is een beetje ver weg, zelfs voor Erinsborough's Bush Telegraph. Eigenlijk, een ex-boyfriend van jou heeft me af. Echt? Wie zou dat zijn? Lou Carpenter? Griff, do you know Lou? You could say that. I'm his little sister. You're not... Oh, no, you're not little Brenda Carpenter. The last time I saw you, I was knee-high to a grasshopper. Oh, good heavens, I see the resemblance. Now you are, too. I can't get over this. Lou told me he and Harry didn't get on. That's why I used my married name, Riley. Yeah, well, thank heavens you did. The last time Lou's name was mentioned around here, Harold had a heart attack. Oh, that bad. Oh, that bad. Well... Best not take any chances, then. Mum's the word, eh? Mum is the word, absolutely. Or it could send Harold to an early grave. Neighbours. Everybody needs good neighbours. They made me do these things called a showing tonight. Do you know what a showing is? No. It sounds OK, doesn't it? But what happens, right, is that the buyer walks in and you have to show them the whole range. So that means that you have to completely change outfits 30 times in 30 minutes. So? Oh, and that's just for one buyer. And meanwhile, you sit in the change room freezing to death and the next buyer walks in. And you've got to start all over again. It's the pits. Well, why do you do it? Because the modelling agency keeps telling me it's bread and butter work. Hang on, is this the same Lucy Robinson who gave us this big rap on how wonderful modelling is? I know. Just don't tell Dad, OK? I'm going to keep on modelling anyway. It's just I don't want to do any more of those stupid showings. Well, a lot worse things could happen. In fact, they already have. <sighs> like what? What's happened? Uncle Jim and Dorothy Burke. They're on, Lucy. Together? No, apart. Of course, together. read her diary. She wrote how in love she was with Uncle Jim. Anyway, she was frightened I was going to tell him, so she told him herself. And? He feels the same way, apparently. She came over here to tell me how rapt she was. Looks like I brought them together. Oh, oh no. The day after tomorrow, Glenn and Karen are getting married, and now this. Why till I get my hands on that mongrel brother of mine? Told me he and Harry didn't get on, but he might have warned me I was walking into World War Blummin' Three. Oh, poor Louis probably just thought he was doing everybody a favour. He's never understood how much Harold hates him. I should have realised half of Queensland hates him. Or at least they do after they drive a couple of Ks in one of his used cars. <laughs> but you know, Lou, loves the world, thinks the whole world loves him back. Yeah. Oh, I don't think it's a good idea keeping Mum about this. Don't like lying to him, eh? Well, I can't run the risk of him finding out accidentally, not with his heart the way it is. Thanks. Why don't you and I butter him up, eh? By the time we're through with him, we'll have him eating out of our hands, I bet. What does he drink? Oh, Harold's never drinks. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I have to think of some other way to get him relaxed. How about jokes? I heard some beauts the other day. Uh, Brenda, I, I think it might be a good idea if you leave this to me. Harold's a bit funny about jokes. <clears throat> In fact, I think it might be a good idea if you're sort of on your best behaviour until we sort this out. No worries. I'll be an angel, I promise. A saint. Excuse me. I still can't believe it. Hey, what happens if Dad gets really serious about the book and she decides to move in here with us? I don't want to think about it. Can you imagine it? We might as well put a sign out the front saying Stalag Robinson. <laughs> yeah. Hello, you two. Dad, Jim, is it true? true about... Hang on, hang on, hang on. One at a time. Okay. Dad, are you really going out with Mrs. Burke? Well, yes, I am, as a matter of fact. And I'm feeling pretty good about it, too. They don't build them like Dorothy Burke anymore. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you two aren't upset about it. For a minute there, I was a bit afraid you might hate the idea and spoil everything. Who, us? But I really owe you, mate. Just think. If you hadn't read Dorothy's diary, we might have carried on the same way we were forever. Mm. Yeah. Just think. Dad, it's good that you're happy in that, but if this is going to change things around here, we ought to talk about it. 
Yeah, no time at the moment, though, darling. I've got to go and pick some flowers and meet Dorothy for dinner. Oh, my word, that does look sumptuous, yeah, eh? Yeah, Brenda and I felt that you deserved a little treat. Oh. Yeah, amazing what you can do with a few veggies. <laughs> Tell me, Harry, don't you ever miss a good old meat pie, a couple of snags, juicy T-bone? No, 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 no. The thought of eating flesh is totally repugnant to me. Oh, by the way, your diet's going so well, I cooked with a little bit of butter tonight. Just a little bit. Oh. But a little bit of butter goes a long way, Brenda and I thought. <laughs> uh, yes, my oath. Actually, I was surprised to hear that you had have to diet, Harry. I was telling Madge what a fine figure of a bloke you are. Well, me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it. I'll be Paul. Right. Listen, Paul is your new landlord. Oh. Only there's a couple of doors down oh, to our and stop him now. I must warn him. He'll be checking on your suitability. He rather insists Paul on Robinson, it. Brenda oh. Riley. G'day. <laughs> hey, Brenda, pleased to meet you. I reckon you and I are going to get along real well. Yeah. Ah, listen, if you're ready, Major, I'll come back later. Oh, no, no, no. Grab yourself a glass and have a drink with us. Mm. Wine? We do have a guest. Sure, if you don't mind. I heard about that rotten trick Felicity Brent pulled. She's a nasty piece of work, Felicity. I think you might have met your match there. Yes, Madge, she did cost me a bomb. But don't you worry, I'll catch up with her. I never forget the people that cross me, you know that. Oh, oh come on, Paul. <laughs> You'll have poor Brenda terrified if she's a day late with the rent. Good. Ah, oh, only gagging. <laughs> no, apart from that little fiasco, things have been going not too badly at all, actually. In fact, I heard that Parkside Pacific are building a resort up near the guest house. Ah, oh, you always know you're on a good thing when your rivals start copying you, don't you? Well, you? You're not worried about the competition? No, not at all. Well, they haven't even started work yet, Harold. I reckon we'll have all the good clientele covered even before they open the doors. Mm. Cheers. Mm. They are beautiful, and so are you. <laughs> you shouldn't have gone to so much trouble. Well, I'm quite enjoying myself, to tell you the truth. So am I. How are the juvenile delinquents taking the news? About as badly as we expected, Todd is in a state of shock. <laughs> Not half as shocked as I was when I discovered he'd read my diary. Thank you for taking it so well when I told you my deep, dark secret. Forget it. I understand how you felt completely. I was so vulnerable after that awful business with Colin. I couldn't help comparing you to him. You were so kind and supportive. He'd been an absolute toad. I was flattered, Dorothy. I really was. Thank you. You're a very nice man, Jim Robinson. No wonder I thought I loved you for a few days. We're friends, aren't we? Nothing wrong with friends loving each other. <laughs> Perhaps not, but it could have been highly embarrassing if you hadn't been so understanding. They were your private thoughts. No one else should have found out about them in the first place. Mm. How long should we leave Todd under the impression we're a hot item? As long as it takes. He has to learn not to read other people's diaries. I think we should let him suffer for a little while longer. Should we draw the curtains and dim the lights? <laughs> really give him something to worry about? Why not? You were home late last night? Yes, I was, wasn't I? Amazing how time flies when you're having fun. Dad, just how serious is this thing between you and Mrs Burke? Now, you're not thinking of doing anything drastic like marrying her, are you? Oh, oh, of course not. But phew. <laughs> no, it makes much more sense to live together first for a while. In fact, I'll talk to Dorothy today, see how she feels about renting her place out and coming over here. Aren't you rushing things a bit? Not really. Besides, think of the advantages. What advantages? Well, you'll have a fully qualified teacher to help you with your studies for a start. And frankly, I could do with a bit of a hand keeping you lot in line now that Helen's gone. Oh, what do you mean, keeping us in line? Well, you know, um, making sure you obey the rules, handing out a bit of discipline. Dorothy's very good at that sort of stuff. Dad, we're not kids anymore. We don't need supervision. Oh, yes, you do. Besides, I want Dorothy here for my benefit, so it doesn't really matter whether you think we need her or not, does it? No, I guess it doesn't. Just make sure you're nice to her while she's here, for my sake. Yeah, sure I'm with you. Good morning, everyone. And here she is. Oh, I have missed you. Oh, mm. Jim, honestly, it's only been a few hours. <laughs> you two ready yet? I thought I'd give you a lift to school. Bet you can't. Why on earth not? Because we're gonna look... We can't turn up at school with the principal. Fiddlesticks. Your friends will soon get used to it, as you will. It's silly for us not to go together when we're so close by. Come on, chop, chop. You heard her. Chop, chop. Don't forget to wear something warm. 
<laughs> Which part of Queensland are you actually from, Brenda? Um, uh, well, the southeastern part, I suppose you'd call it, yeah. Oh, really? Which area? Ah, uh, well, it's a funny coincidence, Harold, but, um, Brenda was brought up in the same area we were. Is that a fact? Well, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I suppose we even went to the same high school, eh? Oh, yes, probably. I oh, would have been a few years behind you two, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Goodness gracious me, what a coincidence. I wouldn't be surprised if I knew your family. Oh, doubt it. No, 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 come on. What was your maiden name? Uh, Harold, you're going to laugh at this, but... While you were in the shower, I discovered that Brenda is a member of the Carpenter family. <laughs> Isn't it a small world? Carpenter. Yeah. Brenda Carpenter. Good Lord, you'll lose younger sister. Eh, hey, that's right. That doesn't matter, does it? Well, of course it does. I will not have a carpenter in this house, and there is no way on this earth that I'll have one running my coffee oh, shop. Oh, love, don't We've stress. already signed the papers. You got that lease through utter deceit. I'm going to ring my solicitor and get him to tear it up straight away. Now, Harold, Harold, your heart. Now, can't we sit down and discuss this calmly? There is nothing to discuss, and furthermore, I want this carpenter out of the house. Well, the solicitor won't even be in the office yet. Fine. Call from the shop. So, oh, Harold, Harold, wait. Here goes the business. I don't give two hoots about the business. What if he gives himself another heart attack?